We have to talk. We have to talk again, uh, this time around, about Facebook and its renaming to Meta and the Metaverse. So let's get started. So you might have heard that Facebook renamed itself recently to Meta. Meta? Meta? No one knows it really. Uh, besides the name, what they did is steal the logo of a German startup called Msense and the Msense said, ah, we will not go into some kind of uh, heuristical fight with them, we just change our logo again, because they're a startup, we, we don't have the money to do or to fight Facebook even. So this is this, so this is the first big downer I think for Facebook and the first, or for Meta, the first big thing that they did wrong. The other thing is they did something right, I would say, in some sense at least, announced a new product to their name, which makes it a little bit more interesting to discuss this stuff right now, for me at least. And uh, this is a very interesting product called Metaverse. And yeah, the name Verse indicates something like Universe and Meta being like a layer on top of our current universe which opens up a lot of possibilities probably. And you might know but might not know that Facebook or Meta is also the owner of the Oculus Rift or the Oculus um, power or algorithms and this uh, VR kind of technology that they bought a few years back. So what does the Metaverse or Metaverse now mean? Is it something like what we had a few years ago called Second Life, which also tends to be or wanted to be a Metaverse, like a different reality to our own reality where we have another, uh, another avatar, another personality that we can live our dreams, that we have our big nice apartment or castle or whatever we want to have, nice cars, so much that even the currency in the second life was, the Linden dollar I think it was called, was so strong that even brands like Adidas, Puma and many several others as well went into the second life to create stores there, stores where you can buy virtual things, virtual clothes, virtual shoes, virtual everything, virtual cars, whatever you wanted to buy there. And this is somehow when I see the Metaverse announcement and the photos and the videos there that reminds me very strongly of this as well there. What Facebook is planning is basically a second life 2.0. So something that is very very focused on creating a virtual reality for us that probably is also then uh, connected together with their VR glasses so you can really experience a little bit more this virtual reality. But this is not the main point of Meta and Metaverse. The main point is to not capture people's imagination and fantasy uh, about yeah, creating a second world there. It is more about how to capture and keep them there by providing them something that they need right now. In our corona times right now we have less and less physical meetings. My company for example that I'm working for is uh, delaying the meeting that we usually have and what we have is then of course some kind of virtual meeting, usually text meeting but text is very abstract as you know and what we can do to improve this, we learned this over the two last years, is meetings with webcams, big blue button for example, Zoom, Microsoft Teams and all those things that yeah, somehow no one knew two years ago somehow are coming up to shore and show us what we can do with uh, communication, how to improve communication and so on. And Meta and Metaverse is trying to make this the reality for most companies. Because most companies, just like the company I'm working for, has spread over all over the world people that are working for this company. So physical meetings are not only very expensive for the company because the company has to pay flights from Australia, from the United States, from India to 
come and meet here in Germany for example and it costs a lot of money the company but also it costs a lot of CO2 it costs a lot of um, stress to the planet as well which for yeah for the green thumb that we all have nowadays or should have nowadays is maybe not such a good thing and then of course the other issue of physical meetings they are very short and limited in a way the people the, the people that come flying over lots and lots of hours from australia to germany for example they're tired so one day at least they are not really productive can do anything really productive and uh, sometimes they missed something they didn't bring any something important for example they missed it and uh, this is resources are, are missing as well sometimes space is missing and uh, sometimes the location is not the best or you don't have the possibility to do some outdoors activities that that bond the company together which are very very important but when it comes to improving work what might be very interesting is like a virtual space that you where you can meet up with people where you can talk to people you're still sitting at home but you're creating a virtual space where everyone is like as if they were physically there most of the time and uh, this is i think the idea behind facebook not to target like uh, cons consumerism maybe as well a little bit but first of all target companies and s by offering them a solution an alternative for physical meetings that comes very close to physical meetings but with the benefit of less costs because it's a virtual room only and of course of um, the convenience of not of more productivity basically not forgetting anything um, that you cannot bring anymore because you yeah your flight came from australia or somewhere uh, this is very important i think for works and for company and this might be a selling point for, for the metaverse and this is might be something that where facebook can pull people into their metaverse and if they have them already in metaverse then for someone who knows the metaverse already uh, then they know okay uh, there's a solution xyz for my programming code i can buy it at this and this shop so they stay at metaverse because they know the shop is there that offers such a code that i can easily buy and then integrate into my system show my other work colleagues and so on and so such little shops will come into fruition and then of course uh, not only in programming this is my world basically but also in other things like design architecture um, anything basically that that you can imagine can be then put into the metaverse because this metaverse thing is becoming the center of uh, people's work life and work culture and this is something very interesting if you think about how this will influence society because if you spend so much time working eight hours a day usually people work some less some more then of course this becomes like a second life a second reality and if the convenience of this creativity and uh, unlimited uh, bandwidth and so on and things that you can do in metaverse becomes very strong and people are also going more and more away and you can see this trend already starting and growing over the last years when second life was coming up with the idea to buy virtual adidas shoes or something like this i was laughing but nowadays there are people who are buying um, art or yeah some virtual items online where there's the, the only thing that shows that is really this is really their item is that it is written somewhere in some kind of uh, blockchain code that this is the owner of this virtual item and no one else uh, is allowed to use this item can copy this item but it's not the owner of this item so it is becoming an ownership on top of our reality where we own something hold it in our hands and the same goes for things that i'm holding right now in my hand i'm not 100 percent always owning the smartphones that i'm holding here not because i'm not did not pay them off or something like this but because the manufacturer is in control of the software and i don't have the possibility to just exchange my operating system on it for example so our shift of ownership is going strong 
and with the shift of owning something that must or does not have to be something like a bike like this here but can be a virtual bike or a virtual car and people willing to pay for this virtual items is getting stronger and stronger and with the metaverse this can even evaluate evaluate even more so it can like, grow even more uh, in this uh, yeah in the thinking and in this world of metaverse and this is something to think about it because what does this mean when our life goes from uh, this work centric first this is why they pull the people in probably with uh, Facebook metaverse or meta metaverse but what will happen if our social life will be integrated into metaverse which will probably come more quick than we will uh, can say uh, instant messaging or SMS because this is something that is like an extension not even I would say like a reduction of what we have already the work tools that are used for work that can be reduced to something that can be used for social events as well or they will be extended for social events as well and people have the work profile and have the social uh, media profile or this normal social profile and more and more companies will come in and yeah your freedom your 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 um, experiences if like it's not possible to go into cinema in the real world you might go to the metaverse and meet your friends in the metaverse and then you watching the movie in a virtual cinema um, that you have to of course pay as well because the movie is the same movie that will would would have shown in the normal cinema so this is how they will pull and this is how how you can imagine how the world will look like in metaverse but what are the side effects what are the negative effects of this so I can really imagine it could happen in one point but have you ever seen the film or the movie Wally, -E, where the little robot is cleaning up the earth and then sometimes somehow he got to, into space meet really humans and what he figured out is that those humans are just sitting there eating and have robots doing all the work there were other movies as well, Surrogent, I think it was call, called, where they have virtual avatars running around and they were just sleeping in their beds controlling those virtual avatars. And such thing could happen as well with the metaverse where people disconnect from reality completely because in metaverse they have their castle, they have the fame, they have the followers that they probably don't have in the real world. And how do we sleep? How do we eat? It's also such an interesting idea. For now, I would say, okay, we have to stop the metaverse, we have to go out of the metaverse, go to the reality and eat and... and. But what influence has this metaverse life, this second life, then in our reality? Ah, philosophical questions, I would say. And this is what I want you to answer maybe in the comment section, because it's a long talk already. What do you think about Facebook's metaverse? What are the advantages and disadvantages? And where should we put borders, clear borders? We, we don't want it to influence our reality. Should we even put borders on it or should we just not think about it, let it happen and then when things went south we introduce some new rules and borders. That's a nice interesting question. I'm uh, more like for the preemptive um, yeah, way of doing things like think about it before you do something and then do it and not like do it first and then if it goes wrong just learn from it so of course the process is always like both you sometimes even with all the all the thinking that you do there might be something happening or coming up that is uh, completely unique that you didn't think about it and then you have to react on it have to learn on it uh, create new borders create new laws something to 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 adjust how the system works but write down in the comment section what you think about this uh, metaverse and uh, Facebook. What's wrong with uh, Facebook and meta and metaverse? Um, comment down uh, below. And that's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Until the next time. Bye.